brought to you by the Las Cruces Sun News. This is Straight Shooter. What is going on, everybody? This is Justin Martinez, a.k.a. Jay the Sports Dude. And if you are listening right now, let me just say thank you for tuning in to Straight Shooter, the podcast where I shoot from the hip and give you everything that you need to know about the New Mexico State men's basketball team. This is episode seven of our season-long journey. So if you're a returning listener, then welcome back. I missed you. And if you're new to the program, well, then welcome to the family. Where have you been all my life? Guys, we have a lot to talk about today, so sit back and relax because I got... You, I'm coming to you from a place I like to call the saloon. So, bartender, what do we have on tap for today? On tap today is a timeline of this past week for New Mexico State, an interview with Johnny McCants, and week one whack predictions. Alrighty, thank you, bartender. Let's jump into it with segment number one, which is a timeline of this past week for New Mexico State. The Aggies paused all basketball activities on Monday after a person within their group tested positive for COVID-19. And I'm going to go into detail of everything leading up to that point because it is a lot that went down in a very short period of time. So let's get started with Monday, December 28th. New Mexico State faced Cal State Northridge in Northridge, California, where the Aggies lost 66 to 63. Following that game, the team tested its entire group and received no positives. Now let's fast forward to Wednesday, December 30th. New Mexico State stayed in California to search for more games and it announced at 1.14 p.m. that it would be playing Santa Clara the next day. However, exactly eight hours later, the Aggies announced that the game was canceled due to a positive COVID-19 test within the Broncos group. So now it's Thursday, December 31st, and the Aggies are trying to finalize a time and date with another team in the area. But before that happens, Cal State Northridge announces at 10.01 a.m. that it has paused all of its basketball activities due to a positive test of its own. Remember, this is a team that New Mexico State played a little over 72 hours ago, so keep that in the back of your mind. Now, later that day at 7.18 p.m., the Aggies announced that they scheduled two games against UC Riverside. It was set to be Saturday, January 2nd, and Sunday, January 3rd. Now, let's fast forward to the next day, which is Friday, January 1st. After seeing that Cal State Northridge is on pause due to a positive COVID-19 test, UC Riverside began to second guess whether or not it wanted to play New Mexico State because, again, the Aggies had just played the Matadors, and even though New Mexico State had tested since then and received no positives, it still understandably caused for concern. So after consulting team medical personnel, UC Riverside announced at 4.22 p.m. that it decided to opt out of its weekend games against the Aggies. New Mexico State then took a bus ride back to its home base, which is Arizona Grand Resort and Spa in Phoenix, Arizona, later that evening. And that finally takes us to Monday, which is January 4th. New Mexico State announced at 6.52 p.m. that it paused all basketball activities after receiving a positive COVID-19 test within the group. The Aggies were set to begin WAC play with a two-game road series against Dixie State this Friday and Saturday, but because of the news, those games got rescheduled to March 5th and 6th, according to the Trailblazers website. Now, Dixie State had a bye schedule for that week, and these are the dates that New Mexico State was supposed to play Chicago State, but the Cougars suspended their season on December 23rd, so that had opened up some time. The Aggies' next schedule game is a two-game home series against UTRGV on January 22nd and the 23rd. New Mexico State will play its home WAC games this season at Grand Canyon's Activity Center. So there you have it, folks. That's a timeline of how everything went down these past few days. Like I said, it is a whole lot, but hopefully I did a good job of breaking it down for you guys. I do have articles on all of these events on lcsunnews.com. Quick little plug right there. So if you want to read up on it some more, then that's where you can go do so. But for now, let's move on to segment number two. Alrighty guys, so that buzzer means it's time for segment number two, which is an interview with a real fan favorite for New Mexico State, Johnny McCants, aka the Crucis Crusader. That's right, I got to sit down with Johnny this week to talk about the Aggies game against CSUN, how the team has handled the recent cancellations and more. So without any further ado, let's give it a listen. Bartender, change the channel real quick. You got it, boss. Alrighty guys, so today I'm joined by one of the stars for New Mexico State and a straight shooter veteran, Johnny McCants. Welcome to the show, my man. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good since it was a day off. Nice, nice. How's the, uh, just the bubble life in Phoenix treating so far, man? Um, I would say it's been pretty good. Everything's like all accessible to us. We can go to the gym whenever we want. Um, the weight room is right there. And then being able to have a training room here it's like it's pretty good yeah 
Definitely taking full advantage of just that open access to the gyms and all that. Cause I know when you guys were uh, here in, in New Mexico for a little while, you had to do like a sign up sheet and only one or two people at a time, right? Stuff like that. Yeah, that was pretty hard being able to like not go to the gym. It's like everybody trying to play games or practice like that. But being out here, we can just basically do whatever. Yeah, nice. You guys are just, you just got back from California. We had a game against Cal State Northridge. It was a close loss in that one. Um, comeback victory for the Matadors. Just what kind of happened down the stretch there and what's it going to take to make sure that doesn't happen again? Um, I would say that we just kind of got careless with the ball. Um, we weren't playing as a team, really. We took selfish shots in the game. Um, yeah, we didn't. Yeah, we couldn't just score down the stretch. We couldn't get stops either, so it was kind of rough. Yeah, you played really well in that outing, though. 19 points, eight boards. Career high for most made three-pointers in a single game with five of them. So what was working so well for you personally? Um, I would say my teammates, having Donnie down there at the post, him posting up kind of sucks in the D a little. And then getting wide open shots from like my guards, being able to drive and kick or just seeing me open or me screening and then my guy helping and like just being open like that. Yeah, you mentioned Donnie's work on the boards down low, especially with the recent injuries that you guys have had to Jabari and Clayton, just how big of a boost is it to now have Donnie in the mix? Um, I feel like it's pretty good, especially with uh, my style of play because he's always being physical and he's always down there battling all the time and trying to get rebounds or trying to score for us. And I feel like he brings a lot of good energy to the team. So him doing that is like a big help for us. Yeah, that game was your guys' first loss in a while over a calendar year. Just how do you feel the team has responded in practice since then? Um, I feel like we responded pretty good. Uh, of course, we're going to have our bad days and our good days, but I feel like after that loss, we kind of had a little team meeting, like just between the players and stuff, just talk about it and basically gather up like what we really need to work on. And I feel like the next day of practice after that, like we just came out ready to practice. Yeah. Who are some guys that are most vocal in those team meetings? Um, I would say me and Evan. Uh, or probably the ones that like kind of call the team meetings or the ones that kind of like try to talk the most or just try to help each other out. And then all the returners basically, and then some new guys, they have questions. So that's all helpful. Yeah, definitely. And you guys had three other games that you're hoping to play out there in California, the one against Santa Clara and two against UC Riverside. Those got canceled. Just I'd imagine, especially coming off of a loss, it's, Frustrated not get out there on the court as, as soon as possible, right? Yeah. Um, when we got the news, I was kind of sad about it. Like, I, I don't know, I've just been, like, ready to play, like, play a game or something. And then when we got the news, it was just, like, there's not much you can do besides be hurt. Yeah. Have you been looking around the whack just during all of this non-conference play? Are there any teams that have really stood out to you that they're playing really well? Um, I haven't really – done that much yet because I've been trying to like focus up on myself uh, my game and our team lately because this whole like the pandemic is just kind of like mentally wearing us out so I'm trying to keep everybody together yeah definitely who are some guys maybe that are really helping with that we're kind of just keeping the team close during all of this um mostly all the returners uh Wilfred, he's been stepping up, being more vocal in practice, trying to be a leader. But mostly the returners, like Clay and Barry, they're on the sidelines still talking to everybody, helping us out, rebounding for us whenever they have the chance or just trying to get better themselves. Yeah, definitely. Well, Johnny, you know by now that this is normally where I end the podcast by giving nickname ideas to the guy that I'm talking to. But since you are a veteran to this show, I've got a different way of ending this one out. It's called Straight Shooter Superlatives. What this is, mm -hmm. is a most likely player on the team to do this. And you go ahead and tell me who on the team is most likely to do that, if that makes sense. So you ready for me to give you the, the list here? Yeah. All right, let's start it off with most likely to make it in the NFL. The one I would say is probably Marcus. Okay. Yeah. Just because he's like player. built like a football player already. So I feel like he's the one that can make that. Okay. What position do you think he's playing at? Um... Probably 
running back or something. Okay. Yeah, definitely. As long as you hold on to the ball, but yeah. <laughs> now, next one is most likely to win the show. Fear factor. Hmm. Dang. I would probably say either Ag or Bryce. Okay. Why is that? Yeah. Just because Ag's like. I don't know how to explain AG, but like he's pretty solid, and I feel like he go through all that. And then Bryce, he basically takes on the competition head on. So, okay, a little fearlessness. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're not messing with any of that. No, nah, I'm not. Yeah, I can't <laughs> do that. Okay, and then our last one: most likely to become a professional ghost hunter. A professional ghost hunter. Yeah. Um. I'm thinking Tennessee, maybe Wilfred. Okay. Um, yeah, Tennessee or Wilfred. Okay. What's the maybe reason? Donnie. Donnie could be in the mix of that, too. Okay. I see that. I see that. Definitely. Well, Donnie, that's all that I have for today, man. Like I said, I really appreciate you taking time to talk to me, especially on your off day. And uh, best of luck whenever you guys get back onto the court. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, man. Alrighty guys, so that was Johnny McCants talking about the CSUN game, the recent cancellations, and more. Now this interview was actually done maybe like an hour prior to the news of New Mexico State pausing its basketball activities. We actually talked a little bit about the upcoming Dixie State games, but because we now know that they've been postponed to March, I went ahead and edited that part out. That's why it's a bit shorter than usual. I do apologize for that. And that's also why we didn't talk about the recent positive test either. Just unfortunate timing, but either way, big shout out to Johnny as always for taking the time to talk to me. Now let's move on with the show. Alrighty, so that buzzer means it's time for segment number three, which are my whack predictions for week one. That's right, folks. Conference play begins this Friday. And even though New Mexico State won't be a part of the festivities, it's still whack basketball at the end of the day. So I'm starting what will be a weekly segment where I predict the winners of this week's conference matchups. Now, we only have two matchups to preview this week, but that just means I'll get to go a little bit more in depth on each team. Our first one is Grand Canyon at Tarleton State on Friday and Saturday. The Lopes are 4-3 and three so far this season, and they're led by senior power forward Alessandro Lever. The 6'10 veteran is one of only two returning all-whack first-team selections from last season, and he's averaging a team-high 15.4 points to go along with 4.6 rebounds per game. The Lever is someone who provides solid spacing because of his ability to shoot the three ball, and that's why he's really a perfect match with senior center Abzorn Midgard. The 7-foot Wichita State transfer is more of a bruiser down low, someone who makes his living on the glass, and let's just say he's living pretty well right now. Midgard is averaging 14 points and a team-high 9.9 rebounds per game so far this season, and then let's not forget the point guard running the show, Javon Blackshear Jr. The 5'11 sophomore is averaging 13.9 points and a team-high 5.7 assists per contest. He was sensational in non-conference play, and this team is definitely going to be a problem considering how good its big three is. Then there's Tarleton State. The Texans are 2-2 two and two so far this season, although neither of those wins were against Division I opponents. The team is led by Montre Gibson, a 5'11 junior who played under head coach Billy Gillespie at Ranger College last season before both of them made the move to Tarleton State. Gibson is averaging a team-high 13.7 points and 5 rebounds per game. The team's other double-digit scorer is Taj Small. He's a 6'5 junior averaging 12.5 points to go along with a team-high 7.3 boards per game. Now, speaking of Small, this is a Tarleton State team that doesn't have a whole lot of height, but they still defend at a pretty high level. Opponents are only shooting 33.7% against them this season, which ranks first among all WAC teams. But again, two of those four games weren't against Division I squads, so take that with a grain of salt. Still, it's pretty impressive nonetheless. Now, I do think that height is going to play a factor against Grand Canyon, Tarleton State's front court is Shakir Daniel, who's six foot six, and Konstantin Dotsenko, who is six foot seven. Grand Canyon's front court, on the other hand, is Lever at six foot ten and Midgard at seven flat. I think the Lopes are really going to take advantage on the boards, and that'll ultimately be the difference. So I have Grand Canyon winning both of these games. Our next matchup is our series of the week, and that's Cal Baptist at Utah Valley on Friday and Saturday. The Lancers are three and two so far this season, with only one of those wins coming against a Division I team that was Southeastern Louisiana. 
The team is very balanced with four of its five starters averaging double-digit points per game. And at the top of the list is Reed Nottage, a six foot six sophomore who only averaged 3.1 points per game with the Lancers last season. But now he's averaging a team-high 17.2 points per contest on 51.7% shooting from the floor and 40% shooting from deep. The guy has been on fire all season. And even though there isn't a whack most improved player award, he would win it if he were given out today. Nottage is also joined by another returner, Ty Rowell. The six foot two guard is averaging 17 points to go along with the team high five assists per contest. He's a bit of a streaky shooter, but he's lethal when he gets going. And then there's a new face in the mix, Gorjok Jack. The six foot 11 Florida transfer is off to a strong start with the Lancers. He's averaging a double double that's 11.2 points and 10 rebounds per game while shooting 60% from the floor. And pretty much all of those attempts are from close range. He's a traditional big man who just bangs down low and pretty much dares you to try to stop him. Meanwhile, Utah Valley enters the game with a 2-5 record. The Wolverines are led by Jamison Overton, a 6'6 senior forward who's averaging a whack best 19.5 points per game. The guy is an aggressive finisher around the rim. And that's a big reason why he gets to the free throw line so easily. He's averaging 6.8 attempts from the charity strike per contest so far this year. And speaking of being aggressive down low, Fardaz Amok has been as physically dominant as anyone in the country so far. The 6'11 sophomore is averaging 15.3 rebounds per game, which ranks first in the nation. And there's a margin of 2.6 rebounds between him and the guy in second place. Flat out dominant, as I said. He's also averaging 15.9 points per contest while shooting 50% from the floor. All of his attempts are coming from inside the arc, but one guy who is providing some much needed spacing is Trey Woodbury. The 6'4 junior guard is averaging 15.4 points per game while shooting a blistering 44.8% from deep. This is the team's only returning starter from last season, and he hasn't disappointed so far in an expanded leadership role. Now, the pivotal factor in this series is going to be which team manages to enforce its style of play because these are two completely different squads. Cal Baptist lives and dies by the three ball, while Utah Valley lives and dies by its close range shots. I really do think these games are going to be toss ups, so I have them splitting the two contests. But that is going to do it for episode seven of Straight Shooter. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a like, share it with the rest of Aggie Nation, and consider subscribing or following, depending on whatever platform you're listening to this on. If you guys want to stay up to date with all things Aggie Hoops, make sure to follow me on Twitter at JTheSportsDude and subscribe to the Las Cruces Sun News. This has been Justin Martinez, aka JTheSportsDude. I'll see you guys next Wednesday.